Welcome to John Gets Games, where today I'll be introducing you to Red Rising. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief idea of what this game is like to play, and you can learn more details about the game by watching my tutorial where I teach all of the rules while the game is being played. You can find a link to that tutorial in the description of this video. Now, Red Rising is a 1-6 to six player game that takes about 60 minutes to play, and it is set in the dystopian world of Red Rising, which is a book series by Pierce Brown. Now, in this world, everyone is split into 14 casts, and in in this game, each player is in charge of a house, trying to collect the best followers from all of these casts to have the most victory points once the game is over. Now, on a player's turn, they are simply going to lead a card or scout, and effectively what this means is you have a hand of cards in front of you that will give you points at the end of the game, and everyone will give you extra points based off of other cards and conditions that exist in the game state. Now, when you play cards from your hand, they leave your hand, so you're not going to get those points at the end of the game, but cards also have activated effects that will do various things like bring extra cards into your hand or get you extra resources or just manipulate the cards out there on the board. And this is important because the main goal of this game is getting a hand of cards that all interact really well with each other to get as many points as possible from those cards. Now you also get points for strengthening your fleet throughout the game as well as for grabbing helium resources and having them once the game is over. In addition to that, you will get points for influence that you place into the Institute, but the players with more of those influence will get even more points for those cubes versus the players who don't have as many. Now, once players add all of these points up at the end of the game, the player with the most points will be the winner, and that will be the player who is able to best get cards that work together in their hand and that work for the track and the helium and the institute, as well as a variety of other things. You might get extra points for the cards that are removed from the game or from uh, empty stacks on the board, as well as a variety of different colors on the board. There's just a lot of things going on here including the fact that each of the player houses has a asymmetric effect that activates every time you get this sovereign token, which you grab from one of the locations on the board. So each player plays a little bit differently, and uh, one thing you're trying to do is lean in to your advantage there as you're trying to do all of these other things. Now, if you are intrigued by what you've seen here so far, then please check out the tutorial that I made, where again, I teach all of these rules while the game is actually happening, so you will feel like you are playing the game while you are learning it.